Welcome to the Art of Conscious Living. Today I have a very special guest, a visionary artist, Daniel Holdman. He's here to speak about his life as an artist, as a spiritual person who is having a human experience, and so much more. Daniel, thank you. It's a pleasure to meet you in person. We've spoken on the telephone many times, and we have very, a lot of mutual friends. It's nice to meet you in person. So how are you today? I'm just great. Yeah, I had a good day today. Well, your art is absolutely amazing. And how long have you been an artist, and how do you come up with all these incredible visions? I started, well, I, I got to dabble with art in, in uh, high school, in art class. I kind of got this sense that I had a knack for it, but then didn't do anything from after high school until I was about 37, I think, in 1989. And I had read this book uh, and listened to um, this uh I forget his name now, but he was saying, Follow Your Bliss, uh, what's his name, that had that whole, Joseph Campbell. Joseph Campbell, of course. And there yes. was this book, Do What You Love and the Money Will Follow, and I was thinking, oh, I was kind of reevaluating my life, what do I love doing, you know, and I remembered really enjoying art, so I just, just decided to become an artist, and I had more of us calling for spirituality, but I was thinking, this is something I could do to make a living, and garner an audience so that I can then deliver whatever message I may want to deliver. So that's, that's kind of how, how long I've been doing it. And what was the other question? Well, essentially your work, at, I asked you a question of how long you've been an artist, and I would like to uh, ask you about your art. It's very spiritual and very beautiful. It's like bringing heaven on earth here. And how do you, express yourself and why do you express yourself in those terms of, of very spiritual? That's hard to explain really other than that's just what comes through. That's just what turns me on so to speak when I'm playing around uh, either on canvas or on computer or both because I do like this kind of um, full spectrum. Some of it's just canvas work, uh, oils usually and then sometimes I do airbrush touch-up on the oil right on the canvas and then some of it is the, then I have pictures uh, paint, uh, photos of them that are scanned in and then I play with them in Photoshop and add extra little magic and, and different things that I can't do on the canvas so I, I do that type of art too in fact I'm one of the pioneers of that as an artist and I notice there's a lot of people doing that these days but um, where it comes from it's just sort of uh, my makeup or what I'm, what I'm about, what my life is about, what this incarnation is about is, is spirituality. And I've had a, a very profound experience young in life. And it's just been, you know, what's been important to me and what I'm about. So it comes through in that way. In other words, that's like what, what some of the things that I like. Um, and I, I work a lot with light. You know, that kind of light emanating, which means something, you know, and uh, to a degree it means the consciousness of the light that's, that's behind all of manifestation. And I depict it shining through in various ways that impart kind of an inspirational uh, feeling when people. What is your experience of having a, the spirituality and what's your understanding of spirituality? When people talk about it, it perhaps sounds like a very abstract thing where they do it occasionally or they have a, a spiritual experience or they're connecting to something. I have a sense that you are living it more on a very deeper, profound level. Well, I would say I, I'm probably more in that category if you were to categorize people that more is living the spirituality as opposed to just having it be a mental exercise that one believes in. It's more of like a foundation that I've had uh, since I was a teenager and that a lot of my experiences in life throughout the decades have been uh, experienced with that as a context 
that experience of oneness, that experience of the divine, whatever names people want to give it, but f fitting in my life lessons and my growth and everything else, uh, having that as a backdrop, as a, as a container for my life, has made it so that uh, it's not just a mental exercise, but it's more of a, a it's, it's sort of deepened and, and evolved into a more um, experiential kind of walking the talk type of mm -hmm. spirituality. Have there been certain teachers or others that have, have shaped your way of being or influenced you or inspired you? Yes, many. I've spent a, a lot of time, a lot of hours, thousands of hours, I would say, probably collect, and throughout my life, listening to teachers that I felt attracted to, that they had something that might um, mm, add to my knowledge and wisdom and just deepen in, in my spirituality. Um, and I can just rattle off a bunch. I have them on my website listed there, in fact, I, because I like mm. to share that information with people. But there's, I guess one of the earlier ones was a woman named Eva Perakos, and she uh, she channeled a, a person named the Pathwork Guide. And uh, it was a whole channeling thing that went on for several decades. An amazing body of work that most people don't even know about, but I was like really into that for some years. And then in more like the last maybe 12 years or 15 years, something like that. Um, a lot of the teachers, a lot of people know about here in Marin, like Gangaji, Eli Jackson Bear, Adi Ashanti, Byron Katie. Uh, there's a man up in Canada that's just amazing. I mean, he's just like this, in this Samadhi state all the time, named John DeRyder. Uh, it's, it's spelled R-U-D-E and then R-U-I-T-E-R. And the reason you mention him and put emphasis on him, when you say the Samadhi state, describe what you have experienced with his Well, teachings. you know, and I talked to Ram Dass in person. I, I've met him a few times because he used to live here and he moved to, before he moved to Hawaii. Mm -hmm. And he was at one of the uh, talks of this John DeRyder and, and, and in the audience as well. And I saw him afterwards in a restaurant. I went up to him. I said, well, what did you think of this guy? And he goes, he's the real deal, you know, and he was like, gave this big thumbs up. Um, I don't know, you feel like what I would imagine to be in the presence of Jesus, if, if Jesus were alive or if we were back there or something where he's just in this very Zen, peaceful state all the time. I mean, even when he's not on, I mean, he's, when he's not on the stage, he's, he can laugh and joke and all these other things, which is, Nice, you know, but but particularly when he's on on the uh, you know given a satsang or a talk or whatever, he just has this presence, this presence that's really powerful. And sometimes he'll just look out in the audience for like minutes on end, you know, just kind of presencing the people there. Right. Well, let's speak about this presence. I have a sense that it's a presence of of quiet solitude and quiet connecting to the the quietness within, the, the sacredness. Mm. He has defined himself of looking at his thinking and his thoughts, and he's not attaching himself to his thoughts. Right. He's sitting there looking at the others, and in doing so, there's this incredible embracing and reverence for all. There's no separation. Yeah. And it's a place that we all can be at and would love to be at this place. But it takes what? How to do this, in your opinion? How to, def how to arrive to this place? Or is this actually a journey that one is doing? You know, I don't know for sure. I think there's various ways that that comes about. But what it seems like to me is that a person, in order to make that become a reality in their life, it needs to be like their highest priority above pleasure and wealth and fame and all these kind of more egoic um, uh, priorities that one might have that are prevalent out there with most people, that one wants to try to get from those types of things the happiness and fulfillment and love and joy and all the, and the peace and everything, They're trying to get it from the outside through whatever. But you know, it doesn't work that way. 
Perhaps it, instead of in the getting, as you so well say, it is in the act of the giving. It's what you're giving, and there's a constant flow of, of just allowing the giving to happen in that moment. Yeah. And there's no ceasing of that to, that, that happens. It's a continuing of that of giving and giving and giving. And through that giving, you are receiving so, so very, very much. Very true. So back to the, the how does one have that come to be? I think it needs to be their, their highest priority is to, to realize, to self-realize in the, in, the, in the greater sense of the word self, the true self, uh, to realize one's um, being an expression or an in, a human incarnation of one God, one consciousness, one being, one whatever, the creator, the source. I mean, there's so many terms that people have for it. But it's not something that one can uh, easily conceptualize. It's something one can experience. It's a possibility. But I think that happens mostly through grace and through preparing oneself to allow it to happen through meditation or through altered states or through whatever types of experience one may have. But having that, so then one then still like has an ego or still is, is because we're all born and bred in egoic mode. That's the prevalent mode for humanity. So it's a matter of whether one takes that seriously and is totally absorbed by it and just being that and identifying with it like you alluded to or whether one is, wears it like a Halloween costume and is aware of it and uses that, that ego in a more healthy way to interact with life and, and, and so forth, but not believe in it, you know, and knowing in the background all the time this awareness that one is no better than anyone else, no more special, but just, just a, a divine expression living and having possibilities of experience. Do you uh, counsel other people or talk with people or advise people? And if you do so, what is that experience like? Well, I'm phased, I've done different things before. Like I had a radio show where I was doing interviews for about five years in a, a, a KVMR, mm -hmm. uh, which is uh, in Sacramento on the foothills and so forth. Um, uh, so I've done different, and I used to read and, and just you know do various things that was my little pulpit, but uh, I'm actually phasing over in my life now from being a spiritual artist to being a minister that has art as one facet of the ministry. And I have the ministry already. I actually uh, was ordained some years ago, but haven't really activated it until now that it's, it's happening. And so with that ministry, I uh, share the messages of whatever people may want to hear. It's, it's more like not so much preaching to the masses, but more preaching to the choir, but not really preaching, but you know what I mean, that saying, but uh, speaking to people that are already um, on the path, but maybe need a little guidance, maybe need a little tips, because I've been, that's what I've been doing most of my life, so I'm, I have some, you know, advice and some guidance to offer. And so uh, how that shows up is one-on-one, -on -one, guidance where I do these readings with people to help them align with their inner divinity so they can make a distinction between what's the programming that they had in, 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 uh, indoctrinated into them by their parents and by life and the lineage issues that got passed along from their ancestors and so forth to, uh, to their blueprint that's natural and, and um, native to this incarnation. And making that distinction can be very helpful to people to align with their purpose in life and to find what they're really, who they really are, you know, in this incarnation. So I do those individual readings. I, I'm just, I've done a couple, but I'm planning on doing more where I do like presentations. Or I do a little video uh, with audio uh, on a screen, you know, projector on a screen for maybe five or 10 minutes to get people all inspired and then give a little talk, not long, but just a little talk on what seems to be, you know, appropriate for the moment. And then uh, questions and answers, and um, also written, written stuff. Uh, I've written material, and, be, and I'm working on a book. There are various things that the, the ministry can offer that's basically the purpose of it is to help people that want help, uh, not trying to convince anyone that's not 
already on the path, but those that are to help them along the way. When you say a reading, what describe what a reading would be? Well, I used is to this do on years, an intuitive level, or is this on a, a effective sensory There's awareness in, level? Intuition comes into it. Um, only because I'm able to feel into people fairly well. I'm able to sense into them and have a certain, um, I want to use the word psychic because it's so associated with so many other mm. types of psychic uh, work that may or may not be spiritual, I don't know. But, but I have that type of a sense to a degree. And what I do is I, um, I do like a little, uh, I do their astrology chart and I see what stands out to me. I don't do like a full reading like I did years ago. I was doing that for a while of astrology readings. But I just see what really stands out. I, first of all, I listen to them for a while and hear hmm. what it is that they're needing some clarity on or help with or whatever. And then I can kind of, you know, within five or maybe ten minutes at the most, I can kind of get a sense of what might be helpful to their unique circumstance. So then I'll, I'll see those things in their chart that might be applicable to that. And then I do a thing called human design, which a lot of people don't know about, but it's an, a system that's even more sophisticated and, and more updated and more comprehensive. And where does this originate from, the human design? Uh, this guy uh, star, uh, had this transmission that he received that in, 19, I guess it was 25 or 26 years ago, mm -hmm. 1987, something like that, whatever. And um, it's just this system, like, like I said, similar to astrology, it involves the I Ching and some other mm. wisdom things and some new stuff. So essentially it's about a, a way a person is uh, being in the world here, we're either a generator or a manifestator, You'd or them, you, yeah. you generate a uh, manifestation person. So it depends on who you are and what right. kind of energy that you're tapping into and aligning yourself with your basic innate energy. Yes. And I'm a projector type, which sounds kind of like a funny term. Some people don't like that term because it doesn't mean that they were projecting our, you know, stuff mm -hmm. onto other people. I mean, it's more like a projector and a movie projector where you plug into some source of energy and project and show show things and can, you know, See things. So I'm a generator manifestation person. Uh -huh. So how does one communicate that we're different in that sense? Uh, how, how are we different? Yes. I am manifesting oh. all the time and you are just generating. A ma so, I, no, I'm not generating. I'm not a generator. I'm a, a projector. A projector. Projector sure. is, is more uh, like, would be like a guide. And I'm not, uh, like, I, I don't have any, like, um, drive or, or ambition to accomplish things or to manifest things or to uh, succeed at things or anything. It's more like what, what, uh, what I'm uh, driven by or what sort of motivates me is to be a guide and to learn and to teach and to uh, maybe share insight, share seeing what I see with other people. So henceforth, it's, it's, it explains exactly who you are from being a visionary artist. You were projecting through your art all these incredible visions, and that was to inspire other people, to show them possibilities of, of higher vibrational energies. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I, I've been getting feedback for some years, particularly since the Internet, and even more so since Facebook, which I had no idea when I joined Facebook what it would be, but it's like the images and some of the words that I put on there too are shared all over the world. And there's some people that are much more, um, whatever, what, you know, having connections and stuff. Like in, in Sweden, there's this one woman that shares my stuff with her base, and it just like goes all over the place. And it's like, who would have thought of that, that there would be such a thing of, of uh, disseminating and getting like uh, the, the artwork and the words out there, it's, it's, it's magical. And you're very happy to do so. It feeds me. It feeds yes. me. The, the notion that I'm making a difference, uh, that making like, possibly people more inspired toward that conversation of awakening and maybe clarified in some ways that helpful to them in that,
that fulfills me. And that's about the only thing that fulfills me other than the transitory fulfillment, which isn't true fulfillment, but the, you know, pleasure of uh, um, pleasure and, and, and those types of things. But anything that's like a deeper, truer, it's, that's about it. That, that's about all that, that juices me. Right. Where everything else seems what is to matter with that. Where, why pursue something that is of the ego or something of lower vibration or something that is of grasping or something of chasing love. Or It, it just seems to just fall away. It, it becomes pointless. Yeah. Yes. So I say it is funny too. As as time is going on, it's, it's becoming more and more obvious. When I like watch TV, which I don't do very much, but if I do, and I flip the channels over just to kind of see what's going on in the world, or other places, and it just seems like the the it it. I hate to use this word, but it seems like it's getting crazier and crazier and crazier, and more and more, um, you know, just enmeshed in this illusion. And they're just like they don't they they're not coming from a place of authenticity or truth or understanding or clarity or any of those things. So it seems like uh, and then there's all these problems with that they we're having in the world of the sustainability and environmental issues, the social justice travesties that are happening um, or injustice. Um, you know, so many things that are just uh, uh, bad bad news, bad direction, just a horrible de uh, destruction. Um, the, the, the economic, uh, in, you know, imbalance and, and, and crimes that are going on in that whole realm. So many things. And it's, it seems like the world is just wrought with all these problems. And the, the perspectives that I've just grown to have throughout my life and this awareness of the oneness and one's connectedness to that I think is the the solutions lie in that, and all these problems get solved when one has that. I mean, it's like if I'm have an awareness that I'm actually just another aspect of the you that you are, that namaste type of a thing. Why would I ever want to hurt you or be mean to you, or why would I why would I want to steal from you or kill you or or do anything that that's going on that's rampant out there in the society? It's like no, you're like a blessed other aspect, even if you're an illusion, you're still another, even if you don't realize it, you're still that in my view. And so I would have nothing but respect for you. And if you act out of line, it's not a matter of getting back at you or punishing you or any of those types of things. It's a matter of speaking to you from the heart and saying, oh, well, this is what impact you're having with that right. or whatever, you know, type of a thing, you know, some, some sort of graceful or gracious uh, approach. Well, in essence, if you did uh, lash out, and as you so pointedly say, the illusion, you would be actually hurting yourself much, yes. much more exactly. than what you could ever hurt me or anyone else. Yes. Because you have to live with that for the rest of your life. And even if you're not even on a conscious level aware of it, it's within you, and it's causing great, great discourse. Yeah. So we have just a few moments here, and it's been an absolute pleasure to speak with you, Danielle. What would you like to share with others that you feel that's very important that you have looked at in your own life throughout the decades and come to this place of that you can totally embrace it and that you would really want to share it for some thing that is very important to you, something that you're passionate about? Gosh, there's lots, uh, lots of things, um, but uh, just I guess what comes to mind is just uh, uh, encouraging people that that they can find the answers to the troubles and the issues that they're going through. That it's not something that shouldn't be there that that they're afflicted with. There's a rhyme or reason to all the issues and all the problems and all those things that we find ourselves that we struggle with, and there are answers. And there are ways of, of, of getting through all that. And if one makes that their first priority, they, they will attract the support that they may need to get there. In a more positive way of being. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. As all, the, all this, all this uh, uh, struggling and the, and, the, and the suffering is a result of identifying with that ego part. And when one 
shifts with that in that regard, everything changes. And a great deal of that is in the resistance, the resistance of actually what is and what they're feeling and accepting and embracing their feelings. Through resistance, it causes way, way much more problems, as mm -hmm. you so pointed out with Byron Katie and uh, Loving What Is and all the other great teachers out there that basically separate yourself from the story, what is and, and what and who you are. And once you do that separation of the story and who you are, then everything becomes very, very clear and effortless and easy. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, thank you. And uh, it's been very short, and I'd like to invite you back again, and we'll go, we'll go much, much more into depth of so much more. Thank you, Danielle. Thank you. Thanks for having me. It's, thank you. It's a pleasure. So from the Art of Conscious Living, thank you, and take care of yourself, and take care of